Hi, my name's Sarah Berman and I am going to show you how to make a room of your own through collage. Um, got a whole load of different equipment here and the main thing is to realise that there's no right and wrong and basically anything I tell you, you can immediately disregard and do it your own way. I'm just here to show you the possibilities of how this can work and the different ways you can go about doing it. So to start with, I'm going to show you some examples, some we made earlier, and they are fairly diverse. You've got this one. And on the other end of the scale, you've got this one. So first of all, and most importantly, you've got your room template. So here you have a number of different options. And I am actually going to go for the, this one, because I've never done it before. So today this is my room and all the others go back in the pack to be used on another day. Now the other important sheets that we have are these, which are my object sheets where I have chosen a whole load of things, but you might well decide to go off piste and find materials from around the home, magazines, anything you've already got and make up your own objects. I just picked these out because I thought they were nice. So we have filter paper, which is actually like a gel colored lens. It's what they use to put in front of a camera to make everything go yellow or red or blue or green. And I like to use these as my first port of call. I'm gonna choose two colors, which I think will look nice together. Oh, maybe I'm gonna go for an orange and a blue. I think that's quite nice, not the green. And, but it's very experimental and the point is you start and make decisions for no reason at all, like I'm gonna use orange and blue and I'm gonna choose that one because I haven't done it yet. And those are the basic decisions that you, know, you start off and then you start rolling from there. Um, there's also, if you wanted something a bit more lightweight, there's tracing paper and this is um, colored tracing paper. It's not like tissue paper, so it's thinner and I'm gonna choose a a colour or two to use from this batch, because that's also quite fun. We also have origami paper, which I, gen I think is just really lovely, because you get lots of different patterns. And I'm going to have a little flip through and just go for the one that just quickly pops into my head as being nice. So that's those chosen. And then finally, the last little bit that I've been enjoying playing with is this glittery paper. And I'm just gonna, again, choose one. Might use that, why not? So those are my papers, all done and dusted and finished. And I put those aside, and I'm going to then start with my room. My first thing I'm gonna start with is, I like to put the filter gels on first. You gotta look, there's a shiny side and there's a matte side. And I'm gonna be pretty basic, and I'm just gonna cut it into some strips and I'm gonna use the glue to just whack it down. And it's quite a fun place to start because then immediately you've got a bit of color going on here and something fun happening. Okay. So I'm gonna start with that there. Now the cool thing about these gels are that when you overlap them, you end up with three. So I'm gonna do this in some little strippy bits. And I'm gonna go, hmm, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I find it's not such a bad idea not to be too precious at the beginning and just go for it and see what happens because what you get at the beginning isn't what you're gonna have at the end. And it's, the main thing about this is the lovely feeling of making decisions which don't actually matter terribly much and that you can always sort out later. I'm gonna go for a wallpaper by doing this. So you'd use whatever method for you works best of finding shapes. Um, I kind of like going with the shape of the room and using that as a starting point. And say, so, okay, well, I'm gonna use, this is gonna be nicely papered from here.
And again, I'm being really, really, really rough and I'm definitely getting things wrong. Or wrong. There's no right or wrong, but there we go. And already it's beginning to take shape into something. So you can see already we're getting a little bit of something in there. Now for, I think, a rug. This one or this one. It's a very hard choice. And okay, I mean, obviously I have been spending days doing this, so I've learned some really, really good cheats, which you will probably see. I use the edge of the paper to work out the shape of the rug, and I use the drawing and the paper together to find the direction I want things to go in. And then when this is done, I'll have something that actually resembles a dumb room. Okay, so from this point, I'm looking at it and I'm going, all right, what do I want to add? And I've been using scissors and glue up until this point, but actually another way you can go about it, say if I wanted to use a bit more paper, it's quite easy just to take your line, run your nail across it like that, press it down, fold it backwards, do the same thing again, and then you actually, you can tear it and do it a few times, and it's actually sometimes much nicer than scissors because you get this sort of softness and a sort of handcrafted quality. And you see, you get a little bit of edge there. And I'm gonna put that down there. That very nicely will fit there if I do that. And then I'm just gonna actually stick that down using a little bit of tape. And I'm gonna go for tape that's a similar color just because this is, I don't want it to get too busy just yet. And you could always also use, if you're not using tape and you're not using glue, you could use a little bit of paint, which will act as an adhesive. So you could just dab that into some corners. And this then I can just actually be a little bit rougher, which I personally like because I get, you get a bit overwhelmed sometimes with too much detail. So this in a funny way, I'm using the tape as a marker. I'm making a bit more of it as well, because then I can move the tape across and I can say, oh look, I'm moving that across there and it makes a nice little pattern. And another thing that's cool is I'm taking from the objects now, because I've got this, I've got some base on, it's looking cool, and I'm gonna start using my objects. And this is the posters, and I've cut these out already, and I'm just gonna do that there, in this nice little poster of Nice on the wall. And then I'm gonna start looking through my other objects and thinking, what can I find here that's really fabulous and is gonna add life to my room? And this is now the bit where it gets fun. Almost this is the hardest bit at the beginning, because you're starting with nothing there. And that's actually probably the hardest thing. When you've got something down, then you've got something to work with. But when it's blank, it's, it can be a little bit daunting. And I think the main thing is just to realise that there's no wrong answer and there's nothing that you can put down that A, you can't collage over, again, if you don't quite like it, and B, it's your room, it's your space, you're in charge. So there's nothing possibly wrong about it. So there, I've got my nice poster of Nice that matches my rug. And now I'm going to have a sift through and decide what to use. Now, lighting is my first choice and I'm gonna probably, I've got a bit of a penchant for this one. I like that light, I think it's a good one. And I'm gonna position it and go, where would that hang? I'm gonna put it there because I'm actually not loving this hard line that's coming down from the ceiling and I think that will make quite a nice little, or hide it quite nicely. As I said, there's nothing you can't change. And it will also add a bit of focus to the top of the room. So that's there, and already it's looking quite sensational. And then I'm gonna go for, I think I'm gonna go for what might be a nice chair to put in the room. I want something, something to sit in before I get to the pets, which is my favorite bit. We're gonna look at where can to sit in this room. And I think, if I'm looking at this room and this room, I actually really like this slightly funny posh chair so when that's cut out and I need to stick it down be it with paint or sticky tabs or tape or whatever the first thing I need to do is think about where I'm going to put it and I'm going to go where does that fit I'm going to put that what do you reckon guys I think that looks quite smart slightly floating but good okay And again, just glue, sticky bits, paint, whatever it is that you're feeling like using or you have to hand. OK, 
Okay, so I've got chairs, I've got lights. Those bits, those basics are done. I've got a little bit of art. Shall we have a vase? And then I can go for some really nice flowers coming out the top. And I actually think I'm gonna go for these mental bright ones. And now we've got a really stupid, massive, oversized vase of flowers in a crazy pot. Looking lovely. Now the flowers are in. Look, it's beginning to take shape and you're getting a room there. And I think this is the point for fun animal. And I have to decide. Or you might even want to have some, oh, but that's so funny. I don't know. There's also the parrot that could look very, very cool. Okay. This is good because it's got a branch and there's a possibility that I could think about putting it outside because I've got a window, but that's not working. Okay, I'm going to go for both of them. Oh, I may not. First of all, this works. I'm doing this first. Sorry, everyone. Too indecisive. But it's when you've got so many choices, sometimes it's really hard to know what to do. And I think that looks really cool sitting on the chair. And I'm actually going to quickly take away that branch because you can sit on the chair directly. There we are. So beginning to be really fun. And now I'm going to get busy with the pens because I might well want to stick the cat on again later and I'm going to keep the cat over here. But just for the sake of keeping things neat and tidy, these are the things I haven't used any of that yet. Oh, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make the frame. I can make a fabulous frame from this because I'm not loving my tape frame. I might do this frame and then that becomes a whole new adventure and a bit more fun. And then after this, I'm going to get busy with the pens. And in a way, that's actually the most meditative, lovely step because you, these pens layer over lots of different things. And you get to just... I'm not going to make this frame quite rough because... There's something quite fun, I think, about using a really sparkly fabric and then being a little bit careless with it. It's something quite cool and it ends up looking not too fixed. So I like that. So now it's time for the pens and I think I'm going to start by using the orange and bringing down my wall again because I've got all this orange here and I think I'd like that to match a little bit. I'm going to have to do a little bit of this because they're new, especially for you. And you could do it really carefully and like really take your time and enjoy doing it or you could be quick and splish splash about the whole thing and do it really fast. I'm now going to work on the ceiling using a black pen to bring in. Now these are beautiful and as I said, very expensive and fabulous, but you don't need to use these and you can actually use acrylic paint and that gives a really nice effect as well. And obviously if you're using paint, it's within your control to how thick you make the consistency and how thick your brush is or how thin your brush is. And the reality is also that you, don't, you, know, you could use colouring pencils on plain paper. I've used this photo paper and we're using these pens because it looks really lovely on the photo paper. But the reality is that these rooms can be printed out onto any paper at all. And you could use Crayola crayons if you like the effect of those better. So this is just my choice of equipment for what is really quite a... You could go anywhere with it. You could even print on newspaper. You could cut out... You don't need to use these beautiful lovely objects, you could find the newspaper and take a face and stick it on there. You could do anything you want. You don't need to be bound by this. So this is a bit wet here, so it's not really going in properly, but I don't mind that. I personally think the, more, the messier it is, sometimes the more personality they have. And if you try to be too perfect with it, you miss out on the opportunity to see where your mistakes will lead you. And I think that for me with collage is one of the things I love is that there's no wrong answer and a mistake would always lead somewhere interesting. And then I am going to pick one of these absurd things, which I love. And I want to do, oh, this is hard. This is my favorite bit actually, because I love these guys. 
And I'm going to very finally add this dude with his chariot because it's so unlikely and I fancy having a harlequin in a chariot riding across my ceiling and that's where I'm going to put him across the ceiling like a daydream. So today's room for me is maybe less of a room and more of a dreamscape. Do you know what? Oh, but then maybe he could go here. This is really hard. I don't know. There he is. Right up there. He's going to have to take on, he's going to have to take on the light. What do we think? Go here. Go here. Go here. So many options of where he could go, but I'm going to go up here because I just feel that that's more fantastical and fun. And then I'm going to do my final flourish. I feel we haven't quite enjoyed this glittery one enough. And actually, do you know what? I'm going to try and rip some just to see what happens because it's one of those things where, you know, until you try something because you haven't got the right equipment with you or you haven't got what you thought you'd like to have with you, until you try and work your way around that, you're not going to find out whether something works or not. And actually, I think they look kind of brilliant. You can just rip these with your fingers and it's really satisfying. So we're just going to rip a few of those in different sizes and I'm putting them down there just so we can lay them out and see how they look. And I think it adds a kind of circusy feel, which is definitely the way my room's turned out. So maybe just a couple more. Use all this up. I quite like the idea of playing games with materials, so I'm a bit fanatical about using up what I've started. So I will go on and use these bits and pieces and other collages because I like to use it up and not let it go to waste. And it also then gives you more boundaries to work around, which, as I said from the beginning, you know, it's your job to decide which ones are rules you want or which ones are rules you don't want, and it's your room so you can change the rules. But having them there in the first place is good to start with. So that's why I've given you a set of materials which you can choose to disregard. And then finally, when it's all done, and you've stuck them down, you will have a room of your own. All done.